Hello, yeah, in this video, uh, I will walk you through steps uh, about how to compute sample size and power in R with synthetic data. Okay, first, uh, let's load the library w, uh, PWR power and set random C. So the first example is uh, the power analysis uh, for two sample t-tests. Uh, let's generate a synthetic data for two groups. Sample size per group is 50. Mean for group A is 100. Mean for group B is uh, 105. Standard deviation is 15 for both groups. Then we can create the data for group A and group B using uh, our norm function. And then we can perform a two sample t test uh, with the equal variance version. I'll print out the results here. Okay. So, given the data uh, we created, uh, the two sample t test uh, yielded a p value of 0 0.06525. So, it's a little bit above 0 0.05, uh, so it's not uh, significant. Um, but uh, to calculate sample size and power, what we really uh, need is the effect size. Okay, and uh, there are many effect sizes for different uh, uh, type of data um, and study designs. For the two sample t test, the most popular effect size is the Cohen's d. Uh, so basically. We can calculate that here is mean b minus mean a divided by standard deviation. Uh, so this is also the so-called signal to noise ratio. Okay, so effect size. Um, so here in this example, the effect size is 0 0.3333, so it's like one third. Uh, as a rule of thumb, um, the Cohen's d is above 0.8, it's considered large effect. Less than 0.2 is considered small effect. Uh, around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 is considered uh, median effect. So we have somewhat uh, uh, small to median effect here. Uh, so that's why we need uh, a larger sample size if we want to detect this effect size. So if we want to um, run a power analysis, um, say using the given sample size and the effect size, we can use this command. Um, so power.t.test, then d equal the effect size. Now we say n equal to n, and we remember n is assigned as 50. So the nearest level, the default 0 0.05, and type equal to two dot sample, and alternative equal two dot cited. So we're telling this R function that we are doing this power analysis for a two sample test, and the alternative hypothesis is two cited. Okay, so you can specify uh, two alternative as less or greater than, uh, so you get actually one-sided test, and that also will impact the power. Okay, So okay, let's print out the power result here. You can see it gives you uh, the title, two sample t-test power calculation, sample says 50 for each group, the effects as d uh, is 0 0.333, significance level 0 0.5, the power, now this is what we are trying to look for. And we did not specify power in the previous command, so it computes the power here, uh, filling the blank. Uh, and alternative equal to two-sided. So the power in this setting is only uh, 0.38, so very low. Um, usually we require study design to be at least the 80% power. Okay, so if uh, it's the other way around, meaning you want to look for a sample size, 
uh, for a given effect size and given power. For example, we ask a question, what if I want to do a new study, uh, well, collect new samples, and I want 80% power, uh, and then how many subjects that do I need to recruit, right, the sample size. So you can use the power.t.test function. Everything is the same, except now you say n equal to null. So you're not going to specify any specific value for n, which is the sample size. But now here, you must specify the power. So power equal to 0 0.8. Uh, and then you can run this function and you print out the result. Now this is the sample size. Um, it, it, there, uh, it tells you, um, the sample size required is at least 142.246. Two, uh, of course, we cannot have one point, let's say, zero point two four six two person. Okay, so usually we round it up, so about one forty three per group. So we need more than fifty people in each group. Okay, um, and for sample size and the power calculation, it's always good to do some simulation to get a range of values uh, so that you can see the sensitivity of your sample size power calculation results um, with regard to different uh, conditions such as the sample size, desired power, uh, potential effect sizes, and whether it's one-sided or two-sided, etc. Um, so here um, I want to demonstrate a very famous object called the power curve. Um, uh, well, let me run this one. You can do this by using the plot function, and then you just run the power.t.test. You specify the effect size, um, n equal to null, significance level 0.05, power equal 0 0.8, is tube sample, and uh, the mean is uh, um, power curve for two sample t test. Okay, I think the default is uh, uh, two sided. So let's run this and see what we get. Uh, now you can see on the right hand side, uh, it's a curve. Usually with the increasing sample size, the power will go up all the, always. So you should see this uh, going from left to right, the curve going up. Uh, and then you have this vertical line that's where it reaches the desired 80% power. So that's right about 142 or 143. Actually, uh, the legend tells you n equal to 143, that's where you reach the desired power. Okay. So this, um, this is really, uh, helpful for you to visualize, uh, the relationship between power and sample size. Okay. And you can also see, um, like after, I don't know, 170, 180, uh, then you don't get much increasing power by increasing sample size. Okay. It rises up really quickly early on, but then going, start going like being flat, uh, at the end. Okay. All right. Uh, the so next example, uh, is about the binomial proportion tests. Okay. So we're going to generate synthetic data, the denominator 100 for each group, uh, the uh, binomial proportions are 0 0.5 and 0 0.65. And we generate the data by using the R binom sampling function. Um, we sample n a times for group A, sample size 1, and probability equal to P underscore A. So we can print out the data. They look like this. Um, then we can calculate the mean that's a sample proportion. Okay, so one is 0 0.38, the other one is 0 0.63. And we can perform uh, a two-sample binomial proportion test by using the prop.test um, function. And uh, so x equal to the uh, number of successes in each group. And then it is the uh, group size uh, in two groups. Alternative is uh, two-sided. and confidence uh, level is at 0 0.95. Okay. 
And here's the result uh, gives us the p value. So this is a highly significant difference. Um, and also given the constant intervals and uh, you know uh, the sample proportions. Okay. But um, if we want to perform sample size of power calculation, the first thing we want to do is to calculate uh, the effect size. The effect size for binomial proportions is a little bit tricky and we need to use the function called the es.h function. Uh, it's the Cohen's h function for binomial proportions. Okay. So here in this case is uh, negative 0 0.30. Okay. And then we can calculate the power by using this effect size, uh, the sample size n equal to na, uh, and it's so this level 0 0.5 alternative is two-sided and we print it out um, and this tells us um, you know the um, let's see here yeah this tells us uh, if we use a uh, hundred in each group um, then with this uh, effect size uh, we will have only 57% um, power to detect the difference. Okay. And if we want to um, calculate the required sample size uh, for the observed effect size, and similarly, we can use this uh, uh, this way. We can use the power dot two p dot test. Um, and uh, n equal to null, this will give us the sample size about 169 and also we can plot out the power curve it look like that, similar to the two sample t-test. Okay. Alright, so you can do use this power function two ways, one is given the power and effect size to catch the sample size or given the sample size and effect size uh, you calculate the power. Okay. All right, uh, and uh, the package PWR has uh, functions for sample size power calculation for other hypothesis tests. Uh, do read the document carefully and get familiar with, uh, you know, all the functions. Then you will be pretty much self-sufficient for performing sample size power calculation for relatively simple design.